Okay everyone, today out on the logging roads, we are coming to see a blockage I discovered a few days ago. Right here looks like there's also a blockage underneath the ice in that drainage ditch. But it looks like the entire pipe is buried in sediment. That's why they got it all marked there. So any area on the road today where the sun is hitting is very muddy and slippery. And the other areas around the dark shaded corners are icy and slippery. So I was out here a few days ago. I found a location where the beavers had plugged it up. Now we're coming back today because it's a better day. We got to investigate the area, do some due diligence, look around for a beaver lodge. If we don't find a beaver lodge, we can go ahead and attempt to get the pipe unblocked. If we do find a beaver lodge that's active, we're going to have to go ahead and leave it until the spring because it's probably not going to be an issue all winter but come the spring thaw when that culvert needs to work it's going to start flooding the road and at that point the logging company is going to have to go ahead and unclog it or maybe we'll get to it first in the spring we'll see you cannot unclog a culvert pipe this time of year if we determine it's a primary beaver pond if it's a secondary beaver pond we can go ahead and do it today because if we drain the beaver pond and they actually live there that it will be a death sentence to the beaver. Because in this weather, when the pond is frozen over, they cannot rebuild, they cannot relocate because everything else is gonna be frozen. The ice is gonna collapse down on their food supply. It's gonna leave their lodge open to predators. So that's why it's not humane to do it this time of year. A private land owner, or if you get the proper permit, can do it any time if it's affecting the roadway. Otherwise, we gotta leave it until the spring. We should be there soon. I don't remember how far exactly it is, but it is down this road somewhere. Right here, I can tell the beavers used to be a big problem back in the day. That's why this whole area is dead. It used to be flooded, but they drained it. Tomorrow we're expecting maybe three to five inches of snow. Today is the 22nd of, um, 22nd, is it? Yeah, it's the 22nd of November, 2023. This morning when I woke up sleeping out here, we were at nine degrees, got pretty cold. Now we're all the way up to 34. That's why we're starting to get some good melting where the sun's hitting. Wasn't a bad night out here for sleeping at all. There was no wind. If there's no wind, it can be as cold as it needs to be. And it doesn't really affect me. It's the wind that blows through the vehicle at night that can make it very bad in those conditions. See, like right here, it's very icy around this corner. But now we're getting up here. We're actually getting down to the dirt. Not quite bad enough yet to require chaining up. Oh, we got logging going on here. Look at this cool machine. That's a cool machine stacking them up. That's a ton of lumber logs right there. We're not in the pulp wood forest at the moment. This is actually going to the sawmill to be turned into logs. And then all the scraps, the bark and all that will be turned into wood chips and it'll be sent off to the wood-burning power plants. Northern New England considers themselves to be over 90% green energy, meaning there's wood-burning power plants because of all the logging going on, all the scrap from the sawmill, whether it's pulp or lumber or wood, it's gonna go to the power plant.
All right, everyone, we have arrived. The sun is actually starting to go down already. We're gonna get out and we gotta walk around this beaver pond. Other than the logging activities, I haven't seen anybody actually driving on the road the past three hours. So we gotta go investigate this beaver swamp before we can touch it. Gotta get far off the road if I can. Just in case a log truck comes. Maybe up here is a little bit wider. It's very lumpy, the edge right here. I think we're okay. All right, everyone, we have arrived. So we gotta do a bit of walking around. These are probably my tracks from being out here just a couple days ago. I was probably the one who pulled over here. So I was taking a look around here and this here might be a beaver lodge, this big lump, the way it comes out there, that may be an extension because sometimes if the water levels are low in the summer, they'll make an extension so their entrance isn't wide open. Driving through here, I noticed right away the water on the other side of the culvert here is at least two feet lower than the other side. We got a two foot plastic pipe. Over here, it's at least two feet higher. So it's not causing a problem now, probably won't cause a problem all winter, but come the spring thaw, I don't know how much has to come through here. It might cross the road. But on the other hand, right there is a pretty major stream and this water might actually be continuing down the ditch and it might not even actually need that culvert. And if that's the case, I'm gonna question why it's even put in for that small amount of water. Although, no, nope, the ditch is going away. It looks maybe we're gonna find out and see. And if it's not accessible enough to get into the beaver swamp, we'll have to leave it alone. I might have to get the big high boots on to even get in there. Oh, uh, look. The ditch used to go down here to the stream, but that's a beaver dam right here. They wanted their pond a little deeper, so they clogged the ditch. It looks like the ditch probably does make its way all the way down to the stream. I'm thinking yes, maybe. Maybe there's another culvert along the way too. I see a little elevated spot. I'm seeing some deer tracks. We honestly don't see many deer around here. Every now and then I'll come across like a massive group of them, but it's not too common. Right here's a beaver dam. Why is the water in here so low? Okay, so that water I have now determined definitely cannot make its way down here to anything else. So come spring thaw, it will cross the road somewhere. There is another culvert pipe where I thought there would be one, but that water is never going to make its way down here. There's a beaver dam in front of it. Look at this. That's a rock. How frozen is this? Not actually too bad. We can get rid of this one with preventative maintenance. It's not really gonna drain anything back, it looks like. It looks like the beavers just did a horrible job sealing it with mud. So when the water didn't come in here as much, yeah, they built it during the rainy season and it had too much leakage to stay full. I look down this ditch, there's another little beaver dam right there. Yeah, so this area has so many beavers all right, so I got my big high boots on, and I'm now realizing, look at these piles of beaver debris. They had to come in here with an excavator and remove multiple beaver dams. Right here, probably another one. They just dammed the ditch every couple dozen feet. So now that I got my boots on, we got to go in here a little bit and look for wherever they could be living. What do we got here for tracks? 
Maybe a bobcat. It's got big nails. It doesn't look like a coyote track. It's something really big. Maybe a lynx. I also see squirrel tracks, bird tracks. This ice I don't think can hold me. Oh, wow. I don't think it's deep right here, so carefully. This froze a lot. If you saw my video when I was here a couple days ago inspecting this, I was easily able to kick through the ice. This froze up a lot. Like I said, it was very cold last night. So we're on this big lump that looks like it may have been a beaver lodge at some point, maybe. Now I'm looking at it and maybe not the way it continues like this. Yeah, now I'm thinking no. I do see beaver sticks all over it. It could be. It might just be overburdened from digging this out. This might be a whole man-made ditch area that's full of water going in here. Yeah. Looks like somebody was walking out there. How safe is this ice? So I have no idea how deep it is. And this is not an easy place to access. So, already using my best judgment, I think this is probably a secondary pond. I'm going to tell you, I personally now do not think the beavers live here. I thought this would have gone back a bit further, but considering the pond literally ends right there, I don't think the beavers are going to be occupying this tiny little space. They probably live down there where it's all flooded. Ooh. All right, I would say this is probably about two inches thick of ice the way it's cracking. Not too terribly afraid if I fell through, because I know it's not super deep. Look at deer tracks. Deer were hanging out. Ooh. It's scary what I'm hearing. Just walking carefully. Hopefully I don't fall through. Yeah. I am almost certain we're not going to find beavers here. Now you see here at the end there's no snow on the ice. It snowed here I think about four days ago this coating. Back there there's no snow because when it was snowing, that was still open water because that's where the current is coming in. It's slow, but enough to keep it from freezing while it was snowing. Now, when we get snow again in a few days, it'll cover everything. But this whole area, this is going to sound amazing if we can get that culvert open. This ice is all going to be cracking and shattering because this is going to drain fast. We got a two foot pipe and this pond is a lot smaller than I thought. All right, I'm confident beavers are not living here. Secondary pond. Ooh. I'm also noticing, looking around, I don't see any trees chewed by them. I don't see anything like that. So I believe the beaver came up here to plug the pipe and just have extra water storage. I have no evidence that they live here at all. If they did live here, there'd be trees chewed down everywhere, creating their underwater stockpile for the winter. Yeah, that culvert, I believe, was put in this summer. By the growth around the edge right there, I can tell it was disturbed earlier this year to have a new culvert put in. All right, before we grab the rake in camera number two, let me show you what's going on. Right here we have sinkage where it wasn't perfectly compacted, but that's barely any sinkage. That's actually a really good job they did because it's hard to compact underneath the pipe, like the triangular areas. So I don't believe the pipe has collapsed or anything. It's also down deep enough shouldn't have a problem hopefully we can get it open good and if you listen carefully you hear the water falling yep i come over to the other side there's no one around for probably at least 50 miles it's perfectly silent out here in the wilderness got no wind noise listen to this i can hear water trickling underneath the ice hopefully that'll help me locate it really easily I just got to smash away some of the ice around the opening. See, if I came back here another week later, this ice would be so thick that this would be basically impossible. You'd be there all day chipping away with an axe, but I think we can get it. Let's get everything out.
All right, everyone, we got camera number two set up. There was a lot of area over here to set it up because they recently installed this culvert this year. And when the excavator was out here, they cleared everything over here because I believe they dug out this entire plunge pool, making it deeper. So they cleared quite the area. I hear a rumbling sound. It might be an airplane. It might be a car a mile away. You hear everything out here. So... Now that we're on the other side, I'm thinking maybe I could set the camera up on the ice. How thick is it? See where I broke it a couple days ago? I don't think it'll be a problem to break it again. Yeah, it's not even cracking or flexing with me out here. I think the ice is thick enough that I will set you guys up out here. And this is going to start cracking and making violent noises, I think, quite fast. Assuming I can get to it very easily. All right, so I'll set you guys up right here. Putting on my insulated gloves, so if I do flood them, they'll quickly warm up like a wetsuit and I'll be good. Currently, I'm running hot, so I'm good. I got energy now. Let's try to get this open. That time of year again, I think I gotta start carrying an axe. I usually carry an axe in the winter. Oh, that was easy. Look, there's the top of the pipe. Oh, look, excavator damage. They hit it hard when they came out to unclog it. Hopefully the dam is right here and not in the pipe somewhere else. Wow, this is really thick compared to couple days ago. I'm going to feel that in my heel later on. I got to open up a little more so we can get the rake in there. The sun's going down so it's getting colder fast. water gets deep fast too it seems hopefully there's no angry beavers under the ice okay good news the dam is right here can I stand on the ice here I bet I weakened it watch me fall through I hope I can stand here I'm scared this ice is slippery now. I don't have any traction. Uh. Got a really bad angle. Whoa. We got some junk out.
losing hope. What? We broke it! Oh my gosh! I think we got it! Wow! The whole pond is cracking! I can't believe we did it! One hundred percent open! Oh my gosh! We got it! I was getting nervous and losing hope there. Wait a second, don't go in there. There you go. Now they can't use this again, because when this melts, it's gonna go in the water and they would push it back there if it wasn't up on the coast or something. Go through. This pond's gonna drain like two feet now. And now I better get the camera because this ice is about to become unsafe and hollow underneath itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera up here. This is not gonna take a long time to drain. So I'm gonna leave you guys here with real time watching the pond crack and I'll even time lapse it at the end. I haven't even looked at the other side to see what's happening over there yet. Let's take a look. That is awesome. That is totally awesome what's coming out of here. Well, I'm gonna have some fun with this at the moment. We're gonna be here for a while, so I'll get some awesome before and after pictures in a bit. Because this, I'm gonna leave you here watch it drain for a bit I say within 20 minutes this is gonna be drained maybe even less hey look my estimate was right we got about two inches of ice or so that's what I thought by the noises it was making when I was on it typically safe for a human you want like four inches to feel safe you could break through this pretty easily unless you're very light yeah I can already see tons of droppage when I started that pipe was just about in the water. It already went down inches. Oh, look at that crack that opened up and the water's pouring out of it onto the surface. Yeah, this is very unstable now, but I'm gonna have some fun. Let's break some ice and you can watch it come out camera number two. I love breaking ice. Suck them on through. The ice seems to be thicker in the middle. When a pond freezes, it freezes from the edges out. 
So it's typically stronger on the edges, but I think the edges melted a couple days ago and refroze. So the metal's thicker now. More debris we're sending through. Now that I can see, I'm tearing apart their foundation a little bit. Because beavers, they don't reuse things you throw up on the side. But if it's in the water, they'll push it back in the way. This here, get that out of here. Fun. That guy got stuck too big. So now, you see how the entire ice is filling? It's pushing down below the water, and this is all hollow on the edge. It's completely unstable now to walk anywhere out there. Water levels are going down fast. Now I can actually get out here a little bit. This pond's not very deep. It could have froze solid. So yeah, beavers definitely weren't living here. This is not as deep as I thought it would have been. But when I was walking on the ice, I knew it wouldn't have been like more than my chest. Well, we got a big one. Let's send it through. I'm hearing violent cracks back there. ice isn't clear because then you would barely see it coming out. I'm glad it's got a little bit of air bubbles in it. Unlike the last time we did this a few weeks ago. Whoa! That went right in my eyes. Big splash. Look how easy it is to break where it's not touching the water. one. It's like a raft. I'm too heavy for it. Oh, it broke a little bit. Go on through. One at a time. Oh, we gonna have 
have more fun. We don't have much time. This water's going to run out. We're already halfway drained. That's a real long one. Awesome. I can't wait to see all that looks on the other side. Come on in. What do you guys think? Can I try to float on this at least for a second? Let's see. I I'm going to fall through it, I bet. It held me for a brief second, but not long. Come on up. Is that gonna fit? Yep, going on through. Go on through. This is so much fun. It's the perfect thickness to have fun. Boom. Boom, boom. One at a time. Nice. Let's see if we can find a little more. We'll keep on having fun before we run out of ice or run out of flow. You saw how this was barely trickling when we got here. It's gonna return to that when it drops. That might get stuck. Yup. This is gonna get stuck too. think so but um wow it did I think yep I can see all the way through there that's awesome yeah the pipe is a little bit deformed in there but it's doing good piece. Oh, it broke. Oh, we got a traffic jam. There we go. Go on through with that stick. It's going. I see it moving. Oh, no, it slowed down. Maybe we can get it out with other pieces. Otherwise, the moving water will melt it out. Look at this long, skinny one. Let's see if we can knock it out of the way with this one. Got to go through there with some speed. Like a battering ram. Woo! I think it went under it. Oh well, it's a piece of ice. It'll melt out. Or when the flow gets a little higher when it needs to, it'll float out. Because it, the pipe is now, it's running like below half its capacity. We're running out of water, so the fun's just about over. But that sure was awesome. I haven't had that much fun with a pipe in a while. Let me get down there and I'll show you exactly the inside of the pipe. So, look what's happening here. It's slanted, no longer sitting evenly on the water, pushing in hollow areas on the edges that you could dangerously fall through. Give it a couple days, that'll freeze solid across the top again, wherever the water level sits. There'll still be about two feet in this area, but we still have another foot of drop to do. Now, I wouldn't walk anywhere out there. That whole thing is unstable now. And the sun's going down fast, so we gotta go down the road and do that other pipe as preventative maintenance so it's able to run 
in the spring thaw. So here's what I was just mentioning in there. You see the piece of ice stuck? There's like a high spot in the pipe and it got stuck on it like a big rig on railroad tracks, basically. So the next high water will give it a nice push through. Wow, look at all the ice chunks we sent through. They're clustering, look at them all. That's a lot more than I thought. That must have been fun looking through like that. Awesome. This is just awesome. So, here's what the other side looked like before any of this. A lot of area over here to set it up because they recently installed this culvert this And here's what it looks like after, pretty awesome. You guys on camera number two got to see it at its maximum flow when the entire entrance was underwater. Now it's running just below half. Actually, technically even less because there's a little hump in the middle of the pipe. I think it's two culverts with a, a coupling. That might be why it's like that in the middle. Well, it wasn't put in the hole straight. Because I can tell by the excavation here, this was probably installed in the spring. So I don't think it went through a frosty winter that would have caused it. I think it was installed that way. Maybe a lot of mud. They put it in because it was very wet in the spring. So it may have been nearly impossible to actually get it put in correctly. And you're still going to hear for quite a while violent ice cracking on the other side. By the time we get back from our little walk down the road, I think we'll be fine. I mean, everything will be down and receded. And I'll show you guys a few more before and after pictures of the area drained back. So, alright, I'm just going to leave camera number two right there. We'll grab it on the way back. No one's going to steal it. This time of year, when it's this cold, it's still hunting season, but it even keeps those guys usually home, pretty much. A couple weeks ago, it was really warm out. You had hunters everywhere. That was, yeah, but now, once we get into this time of year, especially pretty soon when deer season ends these roads will be vacant literally only the loggers will be using them unless you're in an area that has snowmobile trail access you'll have people pulling snowmobile trailers deep out here but I've literally gone three days or even a little more without passing a single vehicle and it's not like I'm just sitting out here on average I travel between 200 miles and 300 miles a day. And the thing that cuts down on my miles is finding things like this, interesting things to show everyone. Like right now, I'm, I'm gonna be here probably for two hours finishing this spot up. So I'm not gonna be on the road as much. So today I'll probably only get 90 miles of travel in. But I'm just saying, I travel a lot out here and I don't see vehicles. It's not like I'm just sitting. That's how rural it is out here. So this pipe, I don't really expect much of anything to come out of here, but if you want to take a look, see that little teeny trickle? It might increase a little bit. I'm sure the dam is holding up a couple inches, but this water is just about receded because getting a good look at it, there's really not much of anything feeding it. This little trickle here might be coming down from what we just drained, but it's minimal. It's mostly groundwater coming in here. And this spot here, it's got all the cover of the trees around it. So we didn't freeze nearly as thick as up there. So here, no way this is holding me. Woo! It's not deep. All right, we got to just get that out of the pipe. This is going to be so fast, I think. So, let's get out now here. Slippery. Whoa! It's pretty slippery. Especially when we spill the water over onto the surface. That can also get really slippery. So let's get this pipe on out of here. I think we got a good angle there. So everyone can see what we're doing. Thankfully, it's not really frozen yet. It's also pretty dry. There's not a lot of wet mud making it not freeze up too. This 
this is not fresh either. This is a couple years old, I can tell this beaver dam. So it mustn't be causing a problem. Maybe when it fills up in here, it can get down to the next pipe. Yeah, this beaver dam is rotten. This hasn't been maintained in a while. No, no, no wonder it's not holding water. Because those beavers, they have to completely be re they have to reseal their dams all the time with mud to keep them functional. Now I'm starting to get dirty as it flings in my face. Yeah, I don't think we let any extra water through. This is a sloppy one. This is a messy unclogging. Actually, a little worse than I thought it was going to be. But regardless, it's open. I actually love beaver dams when they are frozen like this. You can throw it out in big pieces. So yeah, if you throw it up on the bank, the beavers will not reuse it because they can smell themselves on it and they think it failed. They won't reuse the same parts, but if you leave it in the water, they'll, they'll push it back as if it's mud. But you see, we got most of it. There's not much here. Making sure I'm just leaving small stuff that won't get stuck by just the water current. But this dam is old. This hasn't been maintained by the beavers. And even up there, there's no fresh beaver marks. It's a secondary pond. So I think they came from somewhere downstream. I'll wash myself off better when we get back to the other pipe. The water is a lot cleaner up there. All right, we did good. Wide open to the other side. And we did not increase flow I don't think at all. Despite the sun going down and it getting cooler out, I'm sweating already. Oh, look, we did actually increase it a little bit momentarily. Yeah, here's what the other side looked like before. Teeny trickle. And here's what it looks like after. Yeah, we got a little bit more to flow, but that will pay off in the spring thaw when it actually needs to work. Here's the beaver dam in the drainage ditch. I showed at the beginning of the video. It was trickling over it. And now, it's receded quite a bunch. But that's a beaver dam right here. They wanted their pond a little deeper. All right, I'm back. It's probably been about 20 minutes since we were here. In the meantime, we went down there, spent that little bit of time. Now, it has dropped back. Almost completely done flowing. Come over onto the other side. Almost done. We still have maybe eight inches of dropping to do. But yeah, we made a big difference getting the water level down. Here's what the location looked like before we started. And here's what it looks like now. We did pretty good. I wanna walk up through this ditch. We're gonna have some fun smashing that but first i need to clean myself up a little bit while we still got some water i'm still hearing some violent cracks by the water drop so now i gotta clean off all my stuff
Wow, there's ice built up on here. It's so cold out. Because we're definitely way below freezing again. Nice and cleaned off. Clean these off without flooding them. All right. Another one. Nice. Now that I'm really going, the water doesn't even feel cold. My body is heated up nice. And I guess I'll have to wash my jacket. It's got a bunch of mud on it. But I'm gonna sleep out here one more night and then we'll be able to do stuff when I get back out of the woods, like clean myself up. It's cold enough right now that my wet fingers are sticking to the metal tripod. That's kind of cool. Look at the cloud of where I was just standing. The look, it's drained. Watch myself fall down in here because it's all slanted in the middle like a cone. Oh, but we got some thick mud in there. Oh, stinky swamp gases too. So swamp gases are being released because the water level dropped. The pressure of the water is holding together the mud, encasing the bubbles. The bubbles can escape when the water level drops. A lot of people questioned me on that, and they were like, how is the water holding gas bubbles down? Because it's under the mud being held by the water pressure. That's why um, swamps, when they're full, they are like a, what would be the word for it? They contain so many greenhouse gases, and when the swamp is drained, they're released back into the atmosphere. Boom. This one being held up by that tree. This is scary, this is scary. I'm gonna fall down if I wasn't holding this tree for support. And this ice is not supported. This could break anywhere and send me down. Boom. Now we're trying to walk in here. This is a very challenging walk. Whoa. See right here is a good way to twist an ankle. See this? Getting it underneath there. Ooh. Yeah, so far we probably dropped about two feet or so. It's very hard to walk in here. And you see the drainage ditch is draining back to the pipe. Whoa, muddy. Gonna have to wash my boots off again. This is a lot of fun. This is fun. Woo! This is a lot more challenging than it looks navigating this wet, slippery surface and being cautious about getting my feet stuck between it. The ice is a lot thinner up here, up in this area because I guess the wind isn't blowing the cold air through it as much. Or also being so close to the pond bottom, the mud rotting is generating some heat too. Swamps always um, freeze later than the cleaner bodies of water because there's so much stuff rotting in there making heat. Today was an easy day. I was dreading having to spend like an hour in here looking for a beaver lodge, but it became very apparent that nobody's living here. So, look at this. Certain areas, the ice is actually three inches. That's why it was holding me better when I actually got out there, like where the deer was walking. Ooh. This piece actually holds me for a brief second. Yeah, this is not deep in here at all. Now we got like 18 inches of water left in the pond. It's a lot deeper in front of the pipe because they must have excavated and dredged it out. Nice, look at this big floating piece we got. Cool. These areas in the right here where there's nothing holding it, it's so easy to break it. Boom. Awesome. That's so much fun. This big piece actually holds my weight for a brief second. 
I just accidentally dropped my tripod on the ground and you can see I super glued it so many times that I think at this point I'm just gonna replace it this time. So if I need a second tripod again, I'm gonna be a little creative, although who knows, this time of year, it's very, very rare to find these problems. These problems are abundant beavers in the spring because in the spring, they're very active. Once they get out of hibernation, wanting to build things, there's a lot of spring meltwater. A lot of places aren't allowing the hunting of beavers, which makes them explode in population. Because this right here, even if this was where beavers were living, if it was causing a problem to the road, I'm not morally going to do it because I know it's going to affect the beavers, but the logging company sure could. It's private property. They can do whatever they want. But in the summertime is when all the beavers disappear because you don't only have the beaver trapper hired by the logging company, but you also got everyone with a beaver hunting permit looking for them too. So when that happens... Draining it back actually keeps the beaver hunter away until the trapper can remove them, hopefully somewhere better. So by draining a lot of ponds, it actually helps the beaver's survival in a way, if you want to think about it like that. There's going to be areas that are still randomly going to give, especially when the sun comes out tomorrow and hits it, despite even if it's a little below freezing. I just checked in the vehicle. Right now we have made it back down to 21 degrees. We were up slightly above freezing earlier. Look at this, we got a couple pieces of ice jamming against it again. I'm not even going to try. We don't have the water current. That'll just sit there, but the entire surface will be frozen again by morning. I'm honestly surprised it's not already freezing. We drained one last week that you could see an instant like frazzle ice forming on the top. Oh, we actually, yes, we can see it. It's actually freezing up. I think I have to get closer for you to believe me. And we got something there. Looks like um, bobcat poop, I'm thinking. Especially since we actually saw the tracks. Yeah, if we walk over here, it's, it looks like it's already freezing again. Or am I seeing things? Yeah. Well, this pond is shallow after all. Yes, it is refreezing. Look, can you see that if I get zoom in real close can you see the frazzle ice on the surface see that yep it's slowly stretching back over the pond it's cold enough that it's refreezing right now already cool that's cool cool <coughs> I don't think we can send this through. How's that other piece? Oh, look, there's that piece earlier. It got stuck in there. That'll make its way out the next big flow. Yeah, there's not enough current to send any more ice through there. But that was sure one of the most fun ice breaking culverts we've had. And now we're about to get into the dead of winter. The ice will be probably too thick to do any more unclogings unless we do them this week. But I have a bunch of unedited stuff still from the summer, so I'll be randomly posting summer videos mixed in. Maybe in a couple months we'll try doing some winter camps once it gets really cold with some snow. For now, I'm not really in the mood to make those. But a couple months, we'll make a few. Wow, look at this area that sunk in. This is where I walked before. Without the water support, it collapsed. Look how nasty that looks. It looks like diarrhea spilling out of that crack. And you also see some deer tracks there. Over here looks pretty gross. It collapsed. The water came up with a bunch of reddish, nasty looking diarrhea silt. And now the water's receding back, leaving it stay in that darkish orangey brown.
All right, everyone, we were there for about a total of 90 minutes. I'm actually sweating a bit, so I wanna take my jacket off. We're about to get back on the road. In the past 90 minutes, the engine completely cooled down. Despite there being no wind, it's just that cold out. Alrighty. Time to get back on the road. Boom. Some big bumps. Boop. Heard that noise. Accidentally back the hitch into a rock. Maybe the differential, maybe that was. Poked a rock. All right, we're all drained back with the ice. Beavers are definitely not gonna build it back. Also, the beavers, I don't think, would even try to build back a secondary pond. That's the least of their priorities this time of year. But they're probably living around here somewhere to the left. That whole area is flooded down there. I can see what I was looking down the drainage ditch from the pipe right here that we unblocked. And this one here, maybe, you see right here, right here in the road, you see this erosion? This has water crossing it sometimes. This might be where the water crosses because of that second dry unclogging we did. So it might be causing some issues there after all. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I, I misjudged the distance. There's no way any of that water is making it down here to the actual stream. Because here's the stream right here. And this stream rages sometimes in the spring so bad that it goes over the road. I remember when this was completely washed out and impassable a few years ago, like, I don't even have to get out to show you, I'm just going to move like this so you can see all the debris. The water gets so high here that you see all these gigantic logs, those got placed there by the river. To get that high, it was probably going over the road. I wouldn't be surprised if that occurred during that giant flood. Yeah, we have all kinds of debris right there off to the side that gets thrown there by the river. I'm going to get out and show you for a second. Look at all this debris here. This one's even from a beaver. Beaver chew marks. So this was either put here by heavy machinery or yeah, pulled out of the road after a flood or the river pushing over. Just look at all this debris hung up here by the river. A bunch of trees in the woods are slanted with debris stuck against them. Especially this corner here. This is a huge problem because it's just going to keep digging out the edge of the pipes there, the way it's coming in. And look at this big log stuck right there. It's got squirrel tracks walking across it. Yeah, look, that culvert there is basically clogged with all the logs. There's a couple pipes here. Yeah, we're holding up a little pool of water. Yeah, that's actually currently clogged. I want to maybe try to walk down here for a second. Without wind, it's not bad. I don't have a jacket on it. It's not bad, but the slightest breeze is what gets you on days like this. So let's get on down in here. Yeah, this was a very rainy summer. During my inspection of this in the spring, none of this was here. Take a look at the debris in front of these two culvert pipes. Can't even see that one. The other one's a bit blocked. And this is big stuff. This would have to be taken out of here by heavy equipment. Even if I had a chainsaw and attempted this, I would definitely ruin blades. If you hit sand or mud, which is all over this stuff, it dulls blades in seconds and destroys the chainsaw. Gets up inside the moving parts. So this needs to be done with an excavator. I believe that's what this little makeshift road is for, the excavator coming down here sometimes. If they don't get this before the spring thaw, and we have a normal spring thaw where the waterways get high, I'm certain the road will be gone again like it was three years ago is when that happened. Although, even though the road washed out where it wasn't passable, they reused all the culvert pipes. This is actually like a little nice beach right here around this corner. Kind of nice. Yeah, this is kind of nice. 
I'm sure some of this water is what's coming over to what we unclogged a few hundred feet up the road. Most of these ground waterways are connected somehow. It's beautiful out. Look at the sun's about to set. Got a good haze. Look at all this debris. All up here. That little stream, it can rage sometimes. Looking out the other side. That's got a pretty good deep swimming hole right there. The plunge pool. Yeah, there's debris all over the side of this creek. Whatever you want to call it. Back in the vehicle. It was a little chilly out there. Now that I was out there a few minutes. Yep, temperatures are dropping fast already. Now that I started moving, we're reading 18 degrees. It's gonna be down again, real cold again. Last night was nine when I slept out here. I think I said that already. And we're supposed to be cold like that again tonight. It might be a little warmer because of the cloud cover, but I think we're gonna be pretty close to it. Look at this part of the road that's completely shady. The snow didn't melt here one bit. Now the logs, I mean, the roads are becoming solid where the log trucks won't sink. This is the time of year we're gonna start seeing double wide trailers being used again, which can weigh up to 200,000 pounds. They don't run them in the summer because they can sink into the road. There's ice. I just, I slipped a little bit to the side when I moved over. Now, nice tamarack trees to the left. The only pine tree that loses its needles up here. Now this area, the sun can shine. A good amount of it melted. We're supposed to get snow though, tonight. Three to five inches, I believe they said. But you can never believe the forecast that the nearest city has out here in the wilderness. It's usually colder out here. Doesn't mean more snow but the snowfall map will be off from what they say. Didn't see anyone back there for the 90 minutes I was there, except I think that guy right there drove by at the beginning of the video. Roads are in real good shape right now, nice and smooth. If it wasn't for the corners, I'd be able to go a lot faster. I'm going at about 30 right now. And I hope today's video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.